Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another RO Crab video. And today we are diving into the fascinating world of equipment forging and leveling up your mounts. This video will tell you about the three most useful reforging weapon slash tools, as well as how to find the parts to make them, how to level them up for maximum potential, and how to level up your soulbound creatures, which makes them a lot stronger than previously thought. In short though, the video will be centered around charges that you will find in the game that enemies drop upon being defeated. A once mysterious gameplay mechanic is being brought to life in this one today, and I hope you enjoy. Without wasting any time, the elemental charges you find that mobs drop are used for leveling up equipment forge weapons and tool parts, as well as leveling up your tamed creatures. You can find what elemental charge your soulbound creature needs in order to be leveled up by going into your creatures tab of your bestiary and finding your specific mount. If your mount is a rock, for example, you will go to the avian, click on your rock, and you will find out that your rock is the element order. This means to level up your rock, you will right click your rock with charges in your hand of the specific type. For order, your only option being arcane laser storm charges that drop from beholders that can be found flying into the sky above mountain biomes. Now on to the second use. The second use for charges is leveling up equipment forge monster drops by using an equipment infuser. You make the equipment infuser by surrounding an equipment forge with lapis, and then you place the designated charges for any given equipment forge part in this box. You can find the charge element type for an equipment forge item right under its level. If you are using a level 3 part, you will need the master equipment forge though, which requires 18 in your building stat. Now I'm going to transition to telling you about the strongest equipment forge tools in the game that you can make and where to find the enemies that you will need to defeat in order to get the parts and charges you will need to make these max tools. The first tool I'm going to cover is the mining tool. This tool mines incredibly well and makes your own personal hallway just by mining a single block. This tool is made with the Geonaut Spear, level 3. And the best supporting parts in my opinion are the Ent Arm level 3, a Warg Skull level 3, and a Sudomaro Stinger level 3. At the bottom of each item you can see its uses, and this part, the Geonaut Spear, shows you now mine 3 by 2 by 17 just by mining a single block. To get this Geonaut Pike, you must get the drop from a Geonaut, and from testing, these parts are not too particularly rare, having about a 5% drop rate. To level this pike up, you must use Earth Charges, and the best way to get these are by killing Aeropedes in the desert. For the Sudomaru Stinger, you need to defeat Sudomarus in the desert, which are the large scorpion mobs. You do not need to level up the Sudomaru Stinger, but if you want to, you level up the Stinger the fastest by fighting Vespulas, that have a spawn chance whenever you mine Lapis, Redstone, Diamond, Quartz, and a few others. The Sudomaru Stinger will give your weapon the ability to shear sheep very efficiently where you get extra wool for shearing it. A nice use for wool is using it to trade with Flesher and Fisherman Villagers for emeralds. The Ent Arm just gives your weapon a vampirism effect, well, a leech effect, and the Warg Skull gives you a paralysis and bleeding effect on your weapon. To get an Ent Arm, you must defeat an Ent that spawns from cutting down trees and breaking grass. And to get a Warg Skull, you must kill Wargs that spawn in just about every single forest biome. For maximum effects, you will level up these items. The Ent Arm and the Warg Skull are easily levelable in Endgame by defeating enemies in the Nether. Lightning charges from Kako Demons and Void charges from Astros and Behemoths. The next tool is the best overall tool in the entire mod pack. You tunnel through wood incredibly fast, bringing down wood structures within seconds, and you dig 33 block long craters when breaking a single diggable block. This tool is absolutely insane. You make this tool with a Clink Scythe level 3 for axe number 1 and a Remobra Wing level 3 for axe number 2. The supporting parts that work best are an Ent Arm level 3 for the base for that leech effect, a Vespid Stinger level 3 for the pommel that gives penetration and poison, and an Uvo Raptor Skull level 3 as the head for the slowness debuff on enemies. You can also use a Venture Raptor Skull or Iron X for the head. Now on to explaining the best parts on the tool, the Clink Scythe level 3. This is the part that gives you that incredible digging effect of 32 by 2 by 9. It also gives you the ability to shear sheep, just like the Sudomaro Stinger, and it also lets you hoe the ground in a large area, and lastly, it also gives you the aphagia effect, which will not allow the enemies to eat or drink potions. You defeat Clink in the desert in order to get this scythe. To level up this part, you use earth and gravity charges, just like we mentioned earlier. For the Remova Wing, you can find Removas in the desert at night as well in a lot of dungeons, particularly the Doom-like ones. 
To level up the Remobra wings is a bit difficult, as the fastest way would be killing a bunch of lurker mobs in a dark oak forest biome, but it is very worth it to level up this item. It is very satisfying to use a level up Remobra wing to tear through wooden structures. The last tool I will describe is a wonderful supporting weapon that will allow you to paralyze mobs, shred through cobwebs, and heal yourself very fast by giving you a strong leech effect. If you do not have lifesteal on your main weapon, having this weapon on your quick bar for some fast healing and CC on enemies like dragons can prove very useful when you're undergeared. This tool's main parts are the Zephyr Blade and the Darkling Skull. The Zephyr Blade will make your tool inflict paralysis on enemies, which can be incredibly useful, and the weapon will also allow you to shred through cobwebs, shear sheep, and hoe the ground very well. The Zephyr Blade can be obtained from killing Zephyrs that spawn when it rains and can spawn from breaking glowstone. To level up this part, you must use lightning charges that you can obtain from Kako Demons in the Nether. Now, the Darkling Skull gives yourself a leech buff when you hit enemies, so after getting that leech buff you will heal yourself a great amount when attacking any mob. The Darkling Skull is obtained from Darklings that can be found in any dark area in the overworld and Lost Cities dimension. You level up Darkling Skulls the fastest with Void Charges, and you can obtain them from Behemoths and Astroths again, which are found in the Nether. The best supporting base in my opinion for this weapon is the Sylph Wing for the Smited effect, which basically is a damage over time effect, and the best supporting pommel for this weapon is again the Vespid Stinger for extra damage via the penetration effect. Alright, though with that, I will bring this one to a close. Now I could have talked a lot more about equipment forge parts and weapons, but I wanted to be quick and decisive. Also the original video was 20 minutes long and boring in my opinion, so I cut out a lot of stuff that I don't think you needed to hear. If you want to learn about more of this stuff yourself, you can find any charge and equipment forge part with the search bar to the right of your menu easily while in-game in RLCraft. You can make some really cool combinations for some very unique weapons, and all these weapons can be used for certain things. The charges by themselves though, I said basically all I needed to say. They are extremely useful items that should be farmed if you want to level up your soulbound mounts. A powerful level up Maroc at level 10 with diamond pet armor for example can easily solo a tier 3 dragon even if you have no weapon equipped and the dragon is full on attacking your Maroc mount. Powerful soulbound creatures are really a force to be reckoned with. Equipment forge weapons with parts at level 3 can also just be incredibly game changing, just super convenient, speed up gameplay, and it's just really fun to use them as well. Especially the Geonot Pike for mining, that's my personal favorite. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and I really hope you got something out of the video. Take care of yourselves, have a great one, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye